So uh, most of the time, as you know, I kind of tell it like it is, but I'm going to be careful today. Because if I tell like it is, it wouldn't be good for anybody. So uh, obviously, uh, when a team plays like that, that's on me, right? Our, our competitive level, like I thought we competed a little bit the first half, and then the second half, our, our competitive level was, was no good. Like we, we just didn't compete at a high level. And that's what happens. You get your brains beat in if you don't compete at a high level, which is the most disappointing thing to me. I don't really care if we play poorly. But we didn't compete at a high level. When a team that averages 11 turnovers makes 20 turnovers, then their head's not in the game, right? And uh, like I'm disappointed in that. Like, like we have to, we have to we have to really gut check and figure out like, you know, what we want out of this and whether we care about winning. Simple as that. And then you know, I can only play the guys that care about winning regardless of the results. I didn't think we cared about winning really. And again. When a team doesn't care about winning, that's on the coach. So I take responsibility for it. Well, we 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 played Wednesday at St. Joe. Didn't get back till 3:30, so we didn't do anything Thursday. And it's the second time it's happened on a short on a short um, prep because it happened to us against Dayton as well, right? The two, the two worst games we played were on short preps. I don't know, who who did we play before Dayton? So we played at 12 o'clock against Dayton on Saturday, right? Fordham, so, you know, emotionally we got beat up a little bit at Fordham, came back, didn't do anything on Thursday, right, because we got home late, and the same thing happened. So that's a mental toughness issue. It could be a physical toughness issue too, but it's a mental toughness issue. So that's the stuff that bothers me. Is like everybody has to play through that kind of stuff, and we just didn't. We went, <laughs> and your best players especially have to. So again, like I have to listen. I can't put it on anybody else. It's straight on me. Like, damn, if we can't play better than that at home, like, are you kidding me? I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, and I don't think it was as a group, but we had some guys that just didn't compete very hard. Simple as that. That's how I saw it. Now, I watch the tape to make sure, but again, that's my fault. If guys don't compete hard, then they shouldn't play, regardless of how good of players they are. The worst player to the best player, if they don't compete hard, shouldn't play. I don't think I have any choice anyway, right? Like, we're so small without them. You know, it's the right thing to do to develop the team. We certainly aren't going to win any championships, so why not play him? I mean, he's a great kid. He tries hard. He's just developing. You know, he's he's big, and he tries hard. You know, he's going to make mistakes, and he's, you know, he's still learning the game, but he's taking a huge jump from last year to this year. And the good, you know, the blessing with the injuries is at least you get to develop him, and you, you know – what you're going to get next year from him. Now, are you going to win with him this year? Maybe not. But he deserves to play because he competes. You, you mentioned over the years a lot about honesty and practices. When you started to force turnovers, you know, during fourth and fifth and, and you know, five late games and then you get to six and seven and then seven and eight, how do you make sure the guys understand how to play fair? Because you're always trying to come up with a plan to try to win the game. So we kind of bounced back from that. But we started the second half like we, like we're in La La Land, like we were just sleeping. We were sleepwalking, didn't care. You know, it's the second time we did the same thing against Dayton. We weren't out of the game. I really thought at halftime we were going to win the game. I really did. But we, we didn't show any nothing, you know. So, again, like, I can't fix that, right? I can't. The only thing I can do is play somebody else. But until they decide that they're going to compete come hell or high water, right, and especially when things go poorly, because that's what, that's what good players and good teams do is when things go poorly, they play harder. 
And then bad teams don't play harder. They play worse, right? And so until they fix that, we can't win. And we've been down many, many times here, right, and have come back and won. But we didn't show any competitive edge at all today. Right? I mean, these numbers, those, these numbers aren't going to really lie much. Right? Like, like, look at the numbers, like individual numbers. Look at the numbers, and those numbers aren't going to lie. Right? So that's a pride issue. We've all played. Many of us have played where we don't feel great. Most of the time, you don't feel great. Right? Like, there's very few times where you feel unbelievable. Right? But the other guy's in the same boat. So you have to learn how to play when you don't feel great. And when you don't even really maybe feel like you can do it, but you got to play. And we didn't do that. And again, that's all on me. I'm not blaming them. You know, you, it's, it, you have to be more competitive than that. And it really had nothing to do with talent. I mean, they got good talent. Don't get me wrong. They have good players, but it shouldn't have been that type of game. They may have beat us, but it shouldn't have been that type of game. So I'm, I just don't know what to do with them sometimes. Like if you're not competing, there's, it doesn't matter what I do, what offensive sets I run or what plays I run or, or how we practice. If you don't compete, you're not going to win. Simple, right? Like it's not rocket science. You have to compete. And look, there's other teams that go through it. Like, like I think the Lakers haven't competed defensively most of the year, and they paid the price. So you got to care about winning. That's the only thing that matters. Do you uh, play defensively more than anything else and you think it's good for both sides of the ball right now? Yeah, I thought I thought Primo did a really good job of him on him in the first half and the second half I thought he was he made simple like like things that we covered like we told him before he comes off the ball screen, you got to be a little tighter to him be, if he's on the ball side cuz they're going to sucker play you and throw it to him and shoot it. And he got it twice on us. He got one in the first half, once in the second half. Now he covered the back cut. We told him if they dribble at him, he's going to back cut. So he did a terrific job at times. And then, you know, and then, you know, part of it is we're a little small. When Monir doesn't play, we're a little small. Like, we don't cover mistakes. And we're a little small on those wing spots, too. So when they're rolling through, there's not much, there's not much at the basket to keep them from. And that's, that's on us, too. Like, we, get, we have to have. We have to be good. We have to have enough depth and good enough players to beat St. Louis at home. As simple as that. Coach, I'm just going to ask you a philosophical question on this side. Even following him and how he played and how he uh, attacked this team. Look at that promo uh, when he came back in this game in Orlando. But do you think he had that coach's coach at the first home court, or were you expecting him to run through a brick wall? I think you just answered your own question. You know the answer. You're like me. You ask the questions, you know the answers to. We have to develop them to understand, but they're not naturally past first point guards to answer your question. So, you know, we've talked at, at length with Primo that, hey, until you average six assists, we're not winning. But I thought today he, he was a little passive shooting the ball. So... He was trying, but, you know, was it all good? Sometimes, you know, you got to look to score. So how many games are we going to win, honestly? If Primo Spears goes 0 for 5, 1 for 4 at the free throw line, right, and then, and then Trey Williams goes 2 for 8 with 3 rebounds. Like, and, again, I love Trey Williams, and I, I think Primo's a great talent, too. I, I, I like him as a person, but we ain't winning much. Right, like, it's just like if Anthony Davis and uh, Bron don't play for the Lakers, they're not going to win much, you know. And if they play and they play poorly, they're not going to win much. So again, it's the pressure of being the best players is is hard. What do, what do I mean by that? You didn't think I'd ask you a question, huh? Yeah. 
So so the pressures of being the best player means that every day – so your best players every day have to practice harder than your worst players. They have to lead the group. They have to set the tone. They have to be the best. They have to be another coach. And the teams – the teams that best players do that are the best teams. Now, you still have to have good ability, right? Like, right now, maybe we don't have enough ability. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Like, we have to click on all cylinders to win. So, and that's that's nobody's fault but mine, too. So, right now, we don't have enough ability to win, it doesn't look like, right? Consistently. We have enough to win more than we're winning, trust me. But the beatdown mentally can affect guys – and the rally ability of young people have to has to improve. But my point is your best players have to be the best every single day. It has to be. And the teams that have that generally generally are pretty good. So you go back to St. Louis, like we've pretty much had our way with St. Louis over the since I've been here. You know, four and two. We won the last two by fourteen on a team that they, the last time we played them they were seventeen and five and we beat them at St. Louis. But we had a little different makeup on those teams. We were very old. We had unbelievable belief in ourselves, even too much. This team here has like some fragility that the belief structure is not great, right? And rightfully so, because they've gotten smacked around a couple times. So that's the that's the hard part is you have to mend their fragility, and at the same time, you have to be tough enough to get them better. So that's a tough that's a tough dynamic, right? especially if a guy's not naturally mentally tough or has never been in that position. That's coaching. But it's hard because they have to buy into that. And it has to be the whole group. And there's going to be guys like – there's going to be nights where Trey and Primo don't play great. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that. Like, I don't think Trey didn't play great or, or even Primo didn't play great because they didn't try. They just didn't have it. But if they don't have it, we're in trouble. Just, you know, you, you watch a game, just body language, man, when things go poorly. Like, we've all been there. Like, I haven't been, he I haven't been here in a long time, right? So I don't really like, like I told him after the game, hey, I haven't sat down in 35 years as a coach. You want me to sit down when things go poorly? What kind of body language would that, would that show? That's not really me, right? But I didn't like it, but I kept trying, kept prodding. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just give up, even though I knew we weren't gonna win. So that, so they're they're at a fork in the road where they gotta decide like, how badly they want to win. So the problem is, is the transfer portal is a crazy animal, right? Thirty eight percent of them, thirty eight percent last year, right, transferred. So what does that tell you? That when times get tough. Now, in fairness, probably about 10% of those guys should transfer. Guys that aren't playing, you know, but the other 28% probably shouldn't, in my estimation, right? It's because you have to learn how to work to get what you want. I think Fred Thatch is a great example, and even Hargrove, right? Fred Thatch, was he a fourth-year guy? Third or fourth, right? But he hasn't really played all that much, but he's a tough dude when he does play. So he obviously has a really great outlook on what he's trying to accomplish. And Hargrove started the first 15 or 14 games, and now he's coming off the bench. Now, he may not like it, but he's still doing his thing. So that's kind of what I've been trying to hit our guys on, especially like when you're getting what you want, even if you're losing, right, you still, you still should be relatively enthusiastic. The main thing I try to do with these guys is just make sure they understand that I'm that I'm a relationship guy. I I want the relationship with them. But at some point everybody has to be on the same page and that we have to learn, we have to be mature enough 
to make sure that we understand what we have to do to win. And we have to take criticism. You know, but look, obviously we've had issues. Like you can't you can't get beat 77-53 at home. I don't give a damn if you're playing the Harlem Globetrotters and you're the Washington Generals. I mean, I don't know. You could look at my coaching career. I don't know if I've ever lost many games at home, regardless of who we played. You you got you have to win at home if you're a decent team. So right now, obviously, we're not decent. I mean, you can't lose 77-53 at home and be decent. I don't care if you have a bad night. Right? I, that's how I see it. So that's the disturbing part to me is I have to figure out a way to fix it. But I think they have to fix it. One person at a time. So the last two keys I put on, uh, on the board was composure, uh, commo- composure and belief. That was six and seven. You be the judge. Composure was shaky. Things went bad. Didn't keep our composure great. And our belief structure obviously wasn't wasn't great because you can't you can't go if you have good belief so again I'm not blaming them look I get paid to, to make sure that doesn't happen I appreciate